Hey, um, so I decided I wanted to kind of pivot on my channel and start including some of the content related to astrology, crystals, witchcraft, um, and tarot. I do have a separate Instagram account for my tarot readings where I also sometimes post witchcraft related stuff, but it is primarily tarot readings over there. Um, and I do give readings for other people, so if you're interested, just, you know, send me a message on Instagram and we'll get to it. So I just wanted to go through and show everybody my crystals, talk a little bit about what they do, and kind of see if people are interested in having more content like this, where I talk about crystals and spells and do tarot readings and talk astrology. First, we're going to talk about the big one here. As you can probably see it here in the background. This is the largest crystal I own. Um, I got it when I went down to visit my friend in Wilmington. There's a shop there. If you are in that area of North Carolina, I definitely recommend checking them out. They're called Madame Meerkat. Um, they are in Wilmington and they are very affordable. I think I got this crystal for about $45, which considering its size is such a steal. Um, and when I went back down there this year, I got a rather large piece of tourmaline um, for like $5, which up here where I live in Northern Virginia would have probably cost me about 50 for the size it is. If you are in the Northern Virginia DC metro area and you're willing to like come to Fairfax or so, um, there are two shops I can recommend. One is a little more on the expensive side, but is like only crystals. And the other is crystals mixed with like other witchcraft type stuff. Like you can get spell candles, you can get tarot cards, you can get all kinds of herbs. They have like a whole apothecary. Um, and I definitely recommend both of these places. Um, one, the first one being the only the crystal shop, and that is the Crystalis. It's in Herndon, Virginia. Um, again, I said it's like a little more on the expensive side. They're going to have a lot more um, variety of crystals. They do have like this one thing that's really cool is that they sell just the little tiny chips that you can use like in spells and stuff. And I think they're like a dollar a piece. So that is definitely affordable. If you're looking for crystals for like small crafts or any kind of small work where you need just a little piece of it and not like a large rock to work with, then they're definitely very affordable. Um, they're gonna, they have a huge variety. They have some really rare crystals there too. Um, but like I said, they're primarily only crystals and a little more on the expensive side. They do sell like jewelry and stuff as well too, which I highly recommend. Um, I have some of that, but I might go into that in another video. Um, the other shop is in Fairfax. Um, and it is called Sticks and Stones. Now, I didn't know about this place until some of my friends at the used bookstore recommended it to me, and I love this shop. It's really kind of almost hole in the wall kind of vibe, but they have everything you could need for spells. Anything. Like they have candles, they have crystals, so many crystals, and so affordable too. I mean, you'll pay between like five and twenty dollars, depending on the size of a crystal. Um, like I said, the, the tourmaline I bought in Wilmington was a steal for the price. I probably would have paid at least $30, at least, for it here. And I paid 5 down there. So, North Carolina, I definitely recommend Madame Meerkat um, at, in Wilmington. And up here in Northern Virginia area, I recommend Sticks and Stones in Fairfax and the Crystalis in Hernan. Okay. Anyways, we're gonna get into it. I got this big boy in Wilmington for like $45. Um, and it is a humongous piece of fuchsite. I mean, it is just hefty. So it, fuchsite is like a mica type stone. So it has all this glittery stuff and it kind of gets all over your hands as you can kind of see there. Yep. Um, I love this. It has its own shelf over in my collection area and it's just beautiful. I love it. I love the color and this for the uses that it has. I'll go into all this in another video, like what they're good for and stuff like that. But for the uses you can use fuchsite for, having this big one by the rest of my crystals is very useful for me. 
Um, it basically helps keep all my crystals balanced and doing good as far as energy goes. Okay, and then going into the other crystal I was mentioning that I got down in Wilmington, I want to talk about this big chunk of tourmaline. Now, I have quite a few pieces of tourmaline. Um, it is one of my favorite crystals to work with. Personally, I love it. Like, I could never have enough of it, and ideally one day I will have a piece as large as this fuchsite. Um, <laughs> but for now, this is the biggest one I've got, and it is like this. Um, I do have other pieces, so let me show you my other pieces of tourmaline. So the other two pieces I have, I have them in like these little, these little things, these cages. And the reason I have this, so this one is a keychain that I put together. Um, and I keep this on my keys, and in this I have, it will be difficult to see, but in this I have a piece of what they I guess call green or green and black watermelon tourmaline and a small piece of pyrite and basically this is for my own protection um, for the protection of my wallet which is attached to my keys and my money um, so basically I use this to create a spell where me, my keys, my property, and my money are protected. Um, and then I also have another similar, like a cage type thing in my actual car that has a piece of gold stone and a piece of black tourmaline. Um, and this is a similar spell. It's for the protection of me in my car. It's for like safe driving, protecting me from road rage, both from myself and from other people. This is a peacock ore, and I have two of these, so I have a smaller one that I'm not going to show you, and then I have this large one. Um, and this is one of my favorite stones of all time as well, so it is just so cool. It's beautiful. I love this. I love peacock ore. Yeah. And I, I use this one in my tarot work a lot because it's really good for intuition and like divination and type that kind of type of thing. Um, I just love amethyst. If I could have like a huge amethyst like geode, I would, but they're so expensive and I just can't, <laughs> I can't afford it. Um, but this one I have is like this and it is kind of pretty and it looks better when you don't have your hand behind it. There we go. Yeah, so it's a nice chunk of raw amethyst and I personally prefer to work with the raw stones. I just like, they ground me a lot better. <laughs> so, and then I have a smoky quartz, which I definitely got down in Wilmington. These larger ones, I feel like maybe I got all of them, except for a few of them maybe. Um, I definitely got this one at the same time as my fuchsite. This is a smoky quartz. And I liked the kind of like crystal way this one looked. Yep. Um, this is my best friend's like one of her favorite stones. So she recommended it to me at the time. I don't really work with quartz very often. I know it's a pretty common stone, but I just don't, I don't use it very much. This is a good one to have though. Um, so then we have my selenite tower, which is just like this. It's just a tower, and I keep this with my other crystals to help cleanse them and protect them. Um, this is one of the most common and biggest cleansing type crystals, and I definitely recommend you have it. I love the bottom of it. Look how that looks. It's just so cool. It's really smooth. It's super, and I love it. And getting into one of my other favorite crystals that I have quite a few of um, is sunstone. Now I consider this and like black tourmaline my my big pair that I like to use together. Um, and I recently got a palm stone. There it goes. Yeah, but it, it does have like these little reflex in it that can be kind of cool. And I have another piece of it here that's more of like a polished 
type stone. Okay, and then another one that I'm a big fan of, mostly for me being creative in my husband, and this is one I would consider in a pairing for him if I put one together, would be carnelian. And I have two pieces of carnelian so far. I have another palm stone. Focus. There we go. Yep. There it is. That's what it looks like. This one's quite nice. And then I have a small piece of it as well. This is just a little piece of carnelian. And uh, this is a stone that's really good for you if you're a creative type. So I definitely recommend it. And another one here that I have that I have just a little piece. Um, and this is a, a crystal you can uh, technically create um, yourself. It's not easy necessarily. And that would be bismuth. Now bismuth is pretty cool. It's a pretty strong crystal to work with. Um, I like it a lot. Honestly, I would really just like to own a giant piece of this one day just for aesthetic purposes because it's so fucking cool. Um, but again, this is an artificially made crystal technically, like people make it. Um, you should look into it if you're interested. It's definitely pretty cool. Okay, and then I have a recent purchase, which was this little polished cube of moonstone. Now, I think Moonstone is pretty cool. Um, I haven't worked with it a whole lot. And this one, it's hard to see on camera, but it has some like, what looks like swirls kind of inside of it, where when it was forming, um, there's like some air pockets or something, and there's some bubbles, which I think are really cool. And then another recent one that I got along with the Moonstone is this blue kyanite. It's pretty neat. Another raw stone great for protection as well. All right, and then to finish up some of the other smaller ones that I have, I have a uh, malachite, which looks like this. It's got like these striations in it. And the raw stones of these are really cool. Um, and then I have a amazonite with smoky quartz. This one's pretty cool because it's like two mixed into one. I have a small adventuring. It's just a clear greenish stone. I have I have a citrine. Come on. It's pretty cool. I would like a larger piece of citrine to work with at some point medium-sized piece of fluorite. Come on, there it goes. See, it's kind of got purple and green and it's a little transparent. And then I have a very small piece of howlite, which I don't work with very often, but I'm trying to change that because it's a pretty good stone to use. It's kind of white with a marble type pattern. I like this one because it's kind of a triangle that I got. And then I have a piece of red jasper. And there it goes. And a piece of lapis. This just looks like that. And last but not least, I have a piece of snowflake obsidian. Just looks like that. And I had to look up what this one was because I must have bought this on an impulse, but I wasn't quite sure. So if, if you know better than me, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is ruby and zoite. See, it's got some of that reddish purple, whitish green, and black kind of speckle 
texture going on. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this cute little crystal tour. Um, let me know if you want to see more content like this um, in the future. I'm probably going to do it regardless of what people want. But um, anyways, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer people. Um, if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.